This video will go over your initial setup and install of your EcoSeries Moray Tankless Electric Water Heater, as well as an explanation on how water flow and incoming water temperature will affect the output water temperature of the unit. Once you remove the unit from its box, please remove the bracket retaining screw on the bottom of the unit so that you can remove the bracket in order to mount it to your wall. First, mount the bracket vertically on a flat surface, i.e. a board or a wall, larger than the unit itself. Using a level will help keep the heater bracket straight. Make sure the bracket is secure by utilizing a stud or the provided wall anchors. Also, confirm that both tabs on the bracket slide properly into the grooves in the back of the unit. Once you have reattached the unit to the mounting bracket, be sure to reinstall the screw on the bottom of the bracket to secure the heater to the bracket. Please keep this unit away from any potential splashing or leaking water and strong magnetic fields. Next, remove the four screws securing the front cover to the heater. They will be found on the top two and bottom two corners. Use caution when removing the cover not to damage the ribbon cable that connects the display to the power board. You can rest the front cover on the top of the back plate in order to complete the installation of your unit, or if you require more clearance to work on the unit in your installation area, you can easily remove the ribbon cable at the clip located on the power board so that you can remove the front cover and set it aside to ease in the installation of the water and electrical connections. Now let's move on to the water connections. First, be sure to remove the caps before trying to install any form of plumbing. Please use the provided gaskets located inside your caps or the supplied hardware bag to prevent any leaks. When installing your water connections, make sure to use 3 quarter inch NPP fittings, and when tightening the fittings, make sure to use a backup wrench on the inlet and the outlet to prevent damage to the unit by twisting the fittings. It is recommended to install a high pressure discharge valve and a shutoff valve on the incoming water line. Open a faucet and run water through the unit for a few minutes to purge out any air, then turn off the faucet to build up pressure in the line and check for leaks and correct if necessary. Wiring for electrical connections will differ depending on which model of the Eco Series you purchased. Please double check the model type on the label found to the right of the unit. Power for our Eco 180 must be supplied by two 220 volt double pole 50 amp breakers, giving the unit access to a total of 100 amps of possible power usage. Here is a simple line drawing of the power supply wiring for the Eco 180, and here is a real world picture of the same model. Please note that each pair of L1 and L2 terminal connections should be wired to the same breaker so that L1 and L2 are connected to the first double pole breaker and L1 and L2 should be connected to the second double pole breaker. The ECO 210 and 240 run on three 24 volt double pole 40 amp breakers, thus allowing access to 120 amps of possible usage. With both the line drawings and the real world photo, you will notice that there are two more wires on these units as compared to our Eco 180 unit. These two wires, like the previous wires, should be connected to their own 220 volt double pole 40 amp breaker. 
Lastly, our Eco 270 unit runs on three 220 volt double pole 50 amp breakers. I mean the unit has access to 150 amps. This unit will wire up the same as the Eco 210 and 240, only it will be using a breaker with a higher amp limit. In this video we will wire the Eco 180 and we are using a specialty cable to make the explanation easier to understand. On the port in the terminal block to the farthest left is the terminal for your ground wire labeled E and should terminate at the grounding bar in the breaker panel. Next we have our first pair of power connections and in our example it will be the white and brown wires going into the first L1 and L2 terminals. These two wires will terminate at the same 50 amp double pole breaker for this model. Next, we will connect the next two terminals in the terminal block with the black and the blue wires, which again will be connected to the second double pole breaker separate from the first two wires. Make sure that all the screws in the terminal block are tight and secure or an electrical short could occur. Now, if you had removed your cover and ribbon cable completely, you will want to reconnect your ribbon cable. Make sure that you are installing the ribbon cable correctly. There are two notches in the retaining clip for the two raised portions on the plug of the cable itself. Reattach the front cover to the unit. Be sure to install the four screws that secure the front cover. Once the cover has been properly reinstalled, you can begin to switch on your breakers to allow power to the unit. You should see the display power up and also hear an audible beep indicating that the unit is receiving power. You can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit by turning it off to the standby mode and pushing the up button then turning it back on. You can now open a fixture to allow the unit to start making hot water. When you are flowing water through the unit, you should see swirling arrows and a campfire on the display, indicating that the unit is supplying power to the heating element. You can also adjust the set point of the outgoing water during this initial test by pressing the up or down button. You may see the overflow on the display, which will be discussed later in this video. Now we will show a couple of examples of different parameters and how incoming water temperatures at low rate can have an effect on the outgoing hot water temperature of the unit. In this shot you can see we've added an additional device to monitor our water flow, our pressure, and our incoming water temperature. When the display reads overflow, it is trying to tell you the incoming hot water is too cold to heat to the desired temperature at the speed it is moving through the heater, so we would need to reduce the flow of water. With these parameters, our outgoing temperature is 98, giving us a temperature rise of 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Here we bring our flow down to 2 gallons a minute, still with 35 psi and 40 degrees incoming water temperature. As you can see in the drop of flow, we have an increase in temperature of 105, giving you a 68 degree rise. 
Here we drop the flow down even further to 1.5 gallons per minute, still with 35 psi and incoming of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. With this change, we are getting an 80 degree rise, giving us an outgoing water temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, bringing the water flow down to a gallon per minute, still with 35 psi and a water temp of 40 degrees Fahrenheit, we are hitting the max set point of 125 degrees, and the unit will no longer heat any further.